Hello there and Happy New Year! 2016 will see me reviewing a lot more unusual games for a variety of systems and as promised in my last review, I'm going to kick things off this year with a game that's got a slight wintry theme to it. The game is for the Super Famicom and it's called Versus Collection. So let's take a look at the fact file for the game. Versus Collection was released in 1996. It's a Japanese only Super Famicom release published and developed by Bottom Up and the price I paid £4.65p, current going rate on eBay is £5 plus for a loose copy and a little bit more for a box copy but it's a pretty cheap game to get a hold of. Uh, I've only got the cartridge myself so let's get on straight away and take a look at this game. So here we have the intro to the game and you can see a little indication of what's going to be coming along in the game fairly soon. Little previews of the games within the game if you get my meaning. With these cute little kind of penguiny, dragony sort of characters, and there's a title screen uh, which says Versus Collection. Got those characters across the bottom. There's only the two options: sound, which can switch between stereo and mono, and start a game. So let's start the game. Quite nice, colourful graphics, as you'd expect from a Super Famicom game. So there's four game modes to choose from. I'm going to start at the top, uh, and the first game. Uh, it gives you the option, every game is a multiplayer game effectively, or you can also play against a computer. So this one, you can have a maximum of three players and you can choose whether you have two or three to play against. So we'll go with the three. You can then choose a difficulty level for each player, which I'm just going to leave as easy for all three. And then you move on to the game itself. Oh, sorry, no, you choose a stage. So we'll just start on stage one, which is just determines the background. And basically, it's a columns-esque puzzle game. And the idea is to, using the little cursor that you can see, and the guy on the left, by the way, uh, you get the eggs and you need to get them in rows of at least three to uh, eliminate the rows. Uh, and then obviously when you do that, it throws the rows over, the eggs over to uh, one of the other uh, players. I've got no idea how it determines which one it sends them over to. It just does that. Um, and the idea is to just last longer than the other players. To be honest, it's so fast paced that I barely even look at the... Uh, Opposition players just focus on getting rid of my own stuff And uh, so far I'm not doing too badly It does vary quite a lot from game to game. So I've virtually got rid of everything which uh, I've noticed poses a problem in that then you've got nothing to do and You just have to wait for the enemies to throw stuff back at you Although obviously you're at the advantage then you get things like this happening where suddenly there's tons of stuff thrown at you for no obvious reason and uh, then you die, which is really annoying. Uh, and I lost that round. So I'll go again. So you can eliminate rows uh, vertically and horizontally. Ideally you want to do both at the same time for a nice bonus like that, I guess. No, that didn't work actually, that's strange. Uh, it, it's a bit terrible really this game, it's uh, very fast paced, so fast paced you can never really work out what the hell you're supposed to do and uh, uh, quite unfair at times as well. That seems to be quite useful. Uh, it's got quite nice colourful graphics, pretty basic, um, the little characters are nicely animated and um, there's some eggs, <coughs> excuse me. And that's about it, there's some music in the background which is very jolly and uh, it's all very nice and colourful but it's a pretty terrible game which I seem to be doing really well at but will probably still lose somehow. Uh, when the eggs get thrown onto your screen uh, you don't know what col what colours are going to be, so you have to just take a, a guess and hope that you drop them on a, a row or fire them on a row that's uh, appropriate. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not doing too bad again here, but I bet I don't win. Because the AI is not very good in that you, you pretty much lose every time. Uh, 
eventually start to get these things with S's and P's on, I've got no idea what they mean. Uh, they do stuff. I don't know if you're just supposed to get three in a row like anything else. Yes, you are. Uh, but they don't, even though they're the same colour as some of the other eggs, they don't uh, combine with those ones to eliminate rows or columns. We've got quite a battle going on at the moment. See, then something like that happens where I was doing really well and suddenly my opponent's uh, doing really well instead. I have no idea why or how, it just happens. Not a lot of skill involved, I don't think. It's more just to uh, hope for the best and I'm dead again. Annoying. I seem to be doing way better than him there, but for some reason he won. So I'll go one more round and then I think that's enough of this particular uh, mini game. I guess the idea is to try and get combos like on any sort of puzzle game, but um, it, it moves so quickly, uh, it's a bit difficult to do that at times. Again, I've virtually eliminated everything on my own, maybe I spoke a little bit too soon there. And there goes one of the two characters. I guess the thing is, I don't know why it throws the, um, the bricks, the eggs, sorry, over to one or the other of the characters. I've got one left and there's nothing I can do, I've just got to wait and get other stuff thrown at me to make any progress. Oh, I think I won. I did, hey! Okay, so that's all square. But you've seen all you're going to see, it doesn't get any more challenging than that. You can um, put the difficulty level up at the beginning which I don't know whether that gives you an advantage or a disadvantage if you put the opponent's difficulty levels up. There's also no obvious way to get out of this once you're in this game it just goes on forever until you get bored and switch it off so at that point I'm gonna switch it off and move on to the next game. So back at the game selection screen I'm gonna skip game number two for now for reasons that will become apparent later on and move on to game number three which gives you the option of either practice mode or playing against three computer controlled opponents. Obviously if you had more people, human people around, then you'd be able to play against human opponents, but I haven't got any friends. Shame. So uh, this is a racing game by the way, so you've got a number of laps you can do five, seven or nine, we'll just stick with five, and there's four stages to choose from, and we'll start with stage one. So it's basically a Mario Kart type clone and uh, you don't race in cars, you race as the little characters. And uh, the first course, if you can see in the top left hand side, is uh, a really terrible uh, circle. Uh, and you've got this jump option uh, which doesn't serve a lot of purpose in this, other than it makes you go a little bit faster I think. So basically just running around a circle and all the computer controlled opponents have already passed me, I'm never going to catch them up, I don't think. Uh, so yeah, it's a terrible course, it's very purple, um, Mario Kart inspired obviously, brightly coloured, looks a little bit like the uh, game Astro Go Go that I reviewed some time ago. Uh, so it's five laps of a circle with absolutely no challenge, uh, other than trying not to hit the sides which I failed to do there, that's everyone lapping me even though I'm on the last lap, which makes no sense whatsoever. And that's it. So 28 seconds, it's all over and I lost. Uh, so that was the end of that. Let's try one of the other uh, courses just to give a demonstration that they're not all quite as terrible as that. So let's try stage two. Five laps of stage two. And this one's shaped like a star, which offers a little bit more of a challenge. But you have to sort of run back on yourself. 
try not to hit the walls again. Uh, there's no power-ups or anything like that. All there is is this ability to jump. And also, with the shoulder buttons, there's the ability to sort of punch left and right, which you can kind of see there. Uh, but obviously I'm nowhere near any of my enemies, so a little bit difficult to achieve that now. Any kind of punching's pretty much rendered moot. I've actually caught up with them a little bit there. But it's so difficult to manoeuvre around this course at any kind of speed, there's no drifting or anything like that, that uh, it's all rendered a bit pointless, and I'll be finishing last, no doubt. I'm only just behind them, but I just don't see myself ever catching them up. And it's pretty awful. The graphics are nice enough, the music's alright, but the gameplay is terrible. I suppose they just thought, we better put a Mario Kart style game in, because everyone loves Mario Kart. Not quite sure what happens if more than two people want to play this one. Uh, whether it splits the screen further or uh, you take it in turns or what, I've got no idea because I've never played it with any real humans. Where is me? But not that much. The final lap. I'm pretty sure I've been lapped at least twice by the uh, opponents. Please let it be over soon. Yay, I finished. That was awful. So let's take a look at one more stage, which is stage four, just quickly, which, if memory serves me correctly, uh, is shaped roughly like one of the penguin creatures from the game. There you go, you can see it in the top left corner. And this is where the jump option does come in sort of useful. When you charge it up, you can actually use it if you press the right button. To jump oh dear that's a disaster oh well that was unexpected uh, let's try that again what I was trying to say was that if you get the jump charged up at the right point and press the right button you can jump over some of these things but you can't jump over them all uh, in a row because you're only allowed to use a jump every so often. And once again, you're then trying to meander around this horrible course that's really difficult to navigate, um, and it all becomes a bit boring. And I'm already well in last place, so that's it. I can't be bothered to show you much more of it. It's pretty terrible. Uh, so let's move on to one of the other of the four games in this uh, cartridge. Next up, then, I'm going to take a look at the bottom of the four games, the fourth, if you like. Uh, and this one again, you can choose uh, multiple players if you've got multiple players plugged into the joypad ports. Uh, you can set a timer for how long you want each round of each game to go for. We'll just go with the default 30 seconds. And that's pretty much it. And basically you just play the game and it's best described as a cross between Bomberman, although it doesn't really look that way, uh, and Joust, I suppose. It's very colourful and uh, cartoony, as you might expect from a Super Famicom game, just like the other games we've seen so far. The idea is basically just to survive and not get knocked off the ledge at the bottom uh, into the hole. Uh, with the, when the last 10 seconds come into play, you get um, these things blasting you across the screen, these meteors, uh, and I've died basically, got knocked out of the bottom there. Uh, so yeah, it's basically like Bomberman in that you've got to eliminate your enemies and it's like Joust in that you've got to, you can run into them and knock them. You can't really flap, although your characters can flap, you can only really jump. So at the end of each round, which doesn't last very long, uh, you get some points, or in my case you don't because I finished bottom and was eliminated first. And then you can move on to the next round of the game. And the layout of the levels changes, but otherwise it's much the same. Uh, my strategy is just to try and avoid everyone and hope they eliminate each other because it's really difficult to uh, knock them off the ledges. They seem to be able to knock me off the ledge much easier than I can knock them. 
so yeah it's a bit annoying in that respect um, so the best approach is to hide and uh, hope that you're the last one eliminated and uh, at least I've got a point this time because someone's been eliminated and there goes another one and uh, I think I came second there I did I got two points so that was an improvement on the first round and so it goes on with another level layout this one's pretty tough because there's no uh, land at the bottom you've just got to if you fall off that platform at the bottom then you're, you're dead so the key is to stay at the top oh and there I go I'm out this happens a lot quite often you're the first one eliminated and then you just stand and watch the others uh, they don't t tend to eliminate each other either they just kind of bounce around in a very repetitive way and then these meteors come down and start knocking them off uh, again the AI is not very clever and ultimately the only reason this game is probably worth playing is if you got four human players playing it against one another so on it goes and uh, I'm not entirely sure how many rounds there are uh, it just seems to go on forever uh, not varying a great deal for the most part wow that's two eliminated already might have a chance of winning this one if I'm careful this thing's just bouncing backwards and forwards at the top I don't accidentally throw myself off I might have to give him a nudge and uh, he's now stuck on that point Okay. Oh, oh no second again all in all I'm not doing too badly although I am bottom don't really understand that because oh yeah I was terrible the, the third round that was why uh, you can see now the landscape's changed it's a more of like an underground cavern and this rock appears at the top which you can push off uh, and hopefully use that to knock the uh, other players off uh, or you can just fall down and get injured and fall down the hole which is what happens more often than not as you've already seen it's not incredibly clever it's pretty uh, terrible in that respect I think again it'll be more fun as a multiplayer game with other human players rather than the computer controlled ones and I think I was eliminated first again then so that's no points again so on we go My best chance is to stay in the middle and try and knock this boulder onto somebody. It's not going particularly well though. No, nope, there I go again. So I'm now on round 10 and uh, not a lot has changed. Um, the main thing that's different, uh, as I just got eliminated, uh, we're back to the sort of flowery landscape uh, and we've now got this big blue spiky thing that comes across the bottom of the screen and fires bullets at you which knocks you off your track a little bit uh, I lasted about five seconds on this level but we'll have another look at a couple of the following levels I have got eight points so far so not complete disaster although I am bottom so it's not great oh I've won I finally won one without really trying they just all fell down the bottom uh, so I'm now joint third is there a chance to actually overtake one of the computer players for the first time in any of these games No, is the answer. So I'm now in round 15, there's no sign of it uh, ending at any point. Um, back in the indoor cave thing, uh, and I was joint last I think there, uh, eliminated again really quickly. These blue platforms are all slidey when they light up, which makes it even more difficult to stay on them. Uh, I think the key to this one is actually 
or the key to that one would have been to stay on the grey platform which doesn't do you any disservice or anything like that um, so yeah my plan here oh there we go I've got rid of one of them that's two of them I'm in the best position here by, by far there we go I won one hooray generally speaking there doesn't seem to be a great deal of strategy involved oh it's changed again we're back outside and there's some grey platforms and oh you can't oh dear that was awful what that lasted about two seconds uh, you can't actually get up onto those grey platforms I've just found out as I was trying to say I don't think there's a lot of strategy involved uh, certainly against the computer players it's just trying to survive um, it seems almost impossible to form any kind of strategy to knock them off the platforms and things but it's just kind of bump into them and hope for the best so not great again um, certainly as a game against the computer opponents and there I go again at least I got a point that time So I'm getting a little bit bored of this, I'll have one more go, as you can see there's a, the pink player is a, way way out in front with 42 points, for some reason we're all starting in mid-air this time. Oh and there we go again, it's always me that ends up getting knocked down the bottom first for some reason, probably because it's completely unfair. Uh, so I've had enough of that now and we're about to, when this round's finished, at least you can end the game without it going on forever. Uh, so we're going to switch next to the final of the four games. There we go, well done player three. So yeah, enough of that. You can retry levels why you want to, I don't really know. So let's end that game and go on to the last of the four games, which as I mentioned uh, has a wintry theme. Uh, you can only have two players on this one, uh, there's not a lot of other options either, it's basically just uh, one player versus a computer. You can choose a stage, so we'll just pick stage two. Uh, and also a skill level for the computer, uh, we'll just put them on easy level and see how it goes. And uh, the wintry theme of this is, it's a snowball fight. And the way it works is you control a team of your penguin-y characters uh, and you can press one button to throw the... Uh, snowballs and there's another button on allow you to break free from the group and run towards the opposition and throw a snowball at times whenever you want to so the enemy's only got one snowball left oh missed and I won because I've got the most players left basically so it's a very quick 30 second snowball fight and either you eliminate the enemies to win a round or you have more players left than they do when the round ends. So it's 1-0 to me. Let's go for round two. You can select which player you want, I think, as well, somehow. But it's basically just dodge and hope for the best, really. Hope you get your timing right. I'm not doing too well here. I'm down to my last king penguin guy. And they won that one because I made a right mess of it. I think I was pressing the wrong buttons for some reason, even though I did alright on the first round. Yoy. Basically, you just need to get the, the shot in first. Oh, I made a mess of that. I don't know what happened there, they completely destroyed me this round. Uh, if you both throw a snowball at the same time, by the way, uh, then, oh, they beat me. Then uh, they count. They basically cancel each other out. Well, that was a disaster. I don't know what happened there, I did quite all right on the first go and I just messed it up completely. So let's give it a go with a different stage. Let's try stage four. I've no idea what the difference is, but let's go for it anyway. It doesn't look any difference to me at all. Maybe it's just different mounds in the, in the middle or something, I'm not sure. Well, this is not going well again. I guess the bigger your snowball is, the better chance you've got of beating him. Ah, I took out the king there. Oh, 
Oh. It's going to be a draw. Oh, the computer's won right at the last second. How frustrating. Yeah, I've done a lot better than this on previous goes, so I'm a bit disappointed at my performance here. But um, it has got quite nice graphics and it's a nice little game. Uh, better than any of the others, which is why I left it to the last. Well, that didn't go too badly. Oh, I might have a chance this time. Oh. So it's king versus king. Oh, I won! Yay! Okay, so we've got a decider this time at least. Can I end on a high? Oh, not really, not the way things are going. Disastrous. That was a disaster, I was completely wiped out there. Oh well, you get the idea. Even though my performance wasn't very good. So that's it, that's Versus Collection. Difficult to rate it really, I think it's obviously designed to be a game for human players to play against one another rather than playing against a computer player the AI is a bit too harsh, even on the easy levels. Uh, so, as a multiplayer, sit in front of the TV and play together type game, it might be a bit better. As it is, a little bit disappointing, but I do like the snowball fight, and for that reason, I will be keeping it. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Two, one, zero.